The origins of ABA therapy harken back to the research of a groundbreaking psychologist by the name of B.F. Skinner. Dr. Skinner believed that behavior is changeable through positive reinforcement. Skinner found through his research that we all learn through the consequences of behavior. Behavior that is reinforced tends to rewire us and becomes our default behavior. He also found that behavior that is not reinforced will dissipate over time. Skinner's research is commonly seen in every one of our lives. As children, we learn to walk, talk, and avoid picking up hot things through repetitive training from our parents or loved ones. We learn most of our basic life skills through repetitive reinforcement. Reinforcers are essentially the outcomes of the rewards or consequences from our own behaviors. For example, rewarding a child for cleaning his room with money is a positive reinforcer. Cheering a child as she takes her first steps conveys to the child that the awkwardness of her first steps is worth the risk. ABA therapy simply expands this training in intensive ways until each child struggling with autism reaches new milestones and develops the habits he will need to live a full life as an adult. ABA therapy is uh, changing behavior by looking at what is uh, reinforcing the behavior. So things that happen after a behavior occurs where you can either expect that behavior to continue or expect that behavior to stop. And we look at the principles of learning in how we can change that behavior. So can we set up specific environmental situations, we call those antecedents, to ascertain a specific behavior? And then if the behavior happens that we want, how do we reinforce it so that we can expect that behavior to occur again in the future? They have the way to help kids with autism down to a fine science that has little tiny goals that get added together to take a child from not being able to interact with other kids, being focused on their own internal world into kids that can tolerate other kids, can be at school, can follow circle time, can answer questions for you, can get their needs met, can communicate. And that doesn't come from broad sweeping goals, it comes from this daily battle <laughs> with these kids with tiny little goals. Let's say um, we were trying to teach a child colors and uh, we've got some different objects out for them and we're trying to teach them which one is the red object and they just keep picking the yellow one over and over. So there's different principles of behavior, there's different learning strategies that we may use uh, where we elicit the behavior that we're looking for, we elicit the response that we're looking for. So we may move the red apple a little bit closer to them. Uh, that would be one type of prompt that we could use. And then when they pick the red apple, that's the red object that we were looking for, then we would give them some kind of reinforcer. It could be praise, it could be a high five, it could be something that they like, um, an edible item, it could be a toy for them to play with, something to let them know that the behavior that they just had or the, the response that they just gave us is what we were looking for and that's a good thing. And then we would expect, uh, based on that principle of reinforcement, that the next time that we ask them the same question, which is the red object, that they would be able to give us uh, the correct answer. Um, so they're going to first you know, be able to point to a choice between two objects and they're going to be able to point between two pictures of what they desire. Then they're going to be able to say one of the words and they're going to be able to request one of the words. And that process takes weeks to develop, but if they can slowly work at it, they'll get the child there. So at home, parents can be frustrated for years that they can't understand what their kid wants, they can't communicate with their child, and they don't have the time and the expertise to know what are the little steps that their kid needs to make to get there. ABA therapists know that and have the time because it is one-on-one -on -one therapy at such an intense level. They get the child to where they need to be, which seemed impossible before ABA existed. It, it doesn't matter you know, whether, whether an individual has a physical disability or a cognitive disability, that they're, they're not diminished in terms of, of value from anybody else. And I think that 
just becomes something uh, so critical to, to keep in mind daily um, as you're interacting with, uh, with individuals is the, the preciousness and, and um, the beauty of a life um, and, and just communicating that value to, uh, to them in every possible way and communicating your understanding of that value to your community is, uh, is, is, just, is just critically important.